What's up my Makokos, Raid Pros and Bonk Bros, welcome back to another video, Defender here and I hope you're all having a wonderful day. So today I've got some really really informative uh, content I want to go through and I want to talk about 5x3 engravings. Um, now we know with Broshaza on the way for Christmas time, sometime in December, that uh, the content is going to go up a gear, right? So the next tier of raiding, um, and we're going to have like a soft reset, um, but before we really have a chance to get into the new gear, you know, we're going to be wanting to clear that raid with the gear we have at the moment, the relic gear. And um, I think it's become kind of the, the standard in, in the population that if you want to compete in the end game content at the moment, you need to have a 5 by 3 engraving set. Um, and I think that's going to be the case with the Broshaza across the board, whether you're in a whether you're in a static, whether you're um, in matchmaking or pugging, or you know whether you're looking on Discord for for people to play with. I think five by three is going to be the standard that they're expecting from you. Maybe less so if you're a support player. Maybe four by three with some additional stuff, but making sure that you have the good ones is important. Um, and I know right now with the economy, some people are really, really struggling to hit 5x3. Um, and so that's what I want to talk about today because I've done it now on five characters and I want to make sure that everyone's aware of the best way you can go about doing it, how you can save a ton of gold, right? Because we're talking about hundreds of thousands of gold to invest in accessories and stones, uh, not including Fions as well. Um, but it's just so expensive right now to get a 5x3. Um, so I want to move away from the stigma that it's unobtainium, right? That you just can't get it unless you're a whale or, you know, you have some gold roll drops. Uh, and I want to move towards... Uh, the ways that you can approach it and make it more affordable, how you can kind of work towards getting it, how you maybe can make a few changes, and how actually it is actually much more obtainable than people think. So we're just going to get straight on into the video. But as a friendly reminder, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, please consider dropping me a subscribe. Uh, maybe if you enjoyed the video as well, leave me a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Maybe there's some content you want me to touch on. Uh, let me know. But yeah, let's get straight into the video. Thank you. And so right off the bat, let's talk about um, kind of the most important thing I would say in getting a 5x3, and that is just being open-minded, right? So um, I've got 5x3s on uh, four, well, five characters uh, because I'm just finishing the, the books for the last one on the Striker, but I've got all the accessories kitted. I'm just buying up the last few uh, legendary Deathblow books and I'm done. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got 5x3 on all of these, and they're all proper builds, if you if you will. They're, they're all um, built appropriately with their engravings. They're not like skimping on um, the right meta or um, the combat stats etc etc but what I want to talk about is yeah so open, being open-minded and what that means is don't just blindly follow what you see on uh, on a website or on a streamer who's swiping or you know um, maybe what people are putting online about the the best in slot builds um, the, the, the fantastic part with Lost Ark is that everything is flexible within reason as long as you're using your head, right? As long as you're not being silly and just choosing kind of meme stuff or inting. Um, and so we can use that to our advantage and we can play around a little bit and actually save a ton of gold, um, make everything viable and actually kind of add a refreshing touch to, to the way we play. So I'll explain what that means more in detail. And so what do I mean when I say be patient, be open-minded? Um, basically what I'm referring to is don't just blindly follow what people are saying you need or what's the, the expected meta. Actually kind of take a more open approach and think about, um, you know, your alternate class engraving, you know. So uh, both cl every class has two different class engravings they can play and both of them, generally speaking, are usable in the content, uh, they're interchangeable. One is more maybe burst centric and one is more consistent centric in the DPS classes. Obviously as a support, you kind of only have one real option, but as a DPS, we can go with either, either options. Maybe one is stronger than the other, but they're both still usable. They're both still fine to run in any content and they both will successfully clear the content if you know how to play. So off the bat, we can just immediately eliminate having to stick with the most expensive and on meta option okay and I've, I've done that in a few of my builds so on a berserker i was running mayhem originally because you know everyone was trying mayhem it was fun it was um it was quick it was easy uh, berserker's technique was memed on it was a bit of a joke um and then i i saw the the post for the, the korean patch notes and berserker's technique was getting a buff and i was moving between um legendary into relic gear on my berserker and i thought you know what 
I'm just going to go for the Bazooka's technique. It's more affordable. Um, it has some potential along the way, and it changes the playstyle, right? It's going to going to add something refreshing to the mix. And so I went to Trixian. I tried it out. Had a lot of fun. And so I started b to build my my um, my Bazooka's technique build. I kept my Mayhem four x three build from Legendary. So I didn't just eliminate all my options. I kept my Mayhem build. As I was adding the, the Berserker's Technique build into my arsenal, I was still playing Mayhem. And then once I had all the pieces, over time, I built the 5x3. Okay, and that was uh, a, a means kind of, of saving a lot of money. Mayhem books were super expensive, uh, but also it was a way to refresh kind of my, uh, my enjoyment for the class. And I had a chance to kind of learn more about how the class as a whole works, learn uh, how I can build around different... Um, uh, armor, uh, relic armor sets, and take advantage of uh, a multitude of factors, right? And then uh, we talk about um, my other classes. I've got, you know, my my paladin is five by three, uh, running pretty meta stuff. My uh, my gun lancer is five by three, low knight again, running the full meta stuff. And um, my destroyer is rage hammer, five by three, running the meta stuff. And I've been able to, been able to do all these without kind of without spending any money on the game um, outside of cosmetics in the store, um, and just taking my time, being patient with with drops, with accessories from the market, and just kind of um, playing around what I consider to be like deals or sniping on the auction house, and um, and not rushing into having to fill those requirements immediately. Now, I know a lot of people, um, they feel that the FOMO, they have to hit that 5x3 uh, that immediately before they're accepted into groups. They have to have, you know, highest qualities. And then they see the prices that are six figures and they're like, ah, unobtainable. I can't do this. Screw it. We'll play, we'll play something else. We'll play a different class. We'll play a different game. You know, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, there's plenty of tips and tricks we can use to make sure that we're building a class heavily affordable um, and still very, very viable. Okay, and so I want to go through the striker because I've just been building this striker. Um, I almost got him to 1475, and so I thought, you know what, now's the time to move from my current build, which was uh, 4 by 3 plus 1. And I thought, you know what, let's, let's, make the, let's make the dive into the 5 by 3 because I want this class to be ready for Braushaza, and I want to get into Clown. Um, and my static doesn't have that many group uh, ults at the moment, so this this fifth character would have to kind of uh, matchmake it essentially and so five by three just helps with the matchmaking uh, makes it more uh, accessible and so what i did was i decided to go to trixian which is where i recommend everyone should start you know go into trixian and try both of your engravings okay um put on the the recommended kind of uh, engravings to to wear for that uh that, that uh, combat uh, class engraving and and see how it feels you know does it feel good does the alternate class uh, engraving feel strong does do you think you could use this in endgame does it feel viable to you if it doesn't that's fine don't force yourself to play uh you know the style that you don't want to play and then also there are a few other factors you know does this um this this class engraving have multiple options that you can run with it uh, by that i mean um can you wear a different relic set of armor and um, does that change the engravings you wear? You know, for example, Berserker's Technique, you could run uh, Dominion on it and then that lets you wear Awakening engraving and that can save you a ton of money when you're gearing out that class. Yes, it is a slightly um, more beginner friendly build, but it's still viable and it still does plenty of uh, damage. And then if you look on the other side of Berserker's Technique as well, um, you can even swap out, uh, say, like Curse Doll for something like Mass Increase. And that's purely because Berserker's Technique easily hits the uh, attack speed cap and even goes over the attack speed cap. So technically, you don't mind losing 10% attack speed because you can make it up and go back up to cap anyway. So just bear these things in mind that, one, try out both class engravings. Both are always viable. One may be stronger than the other, but it doesn't mean that you won't enjoy the one that is off meta. It actually will save you a lot of money in the long run if you do enjoy it, okay? And the other option is you don't have to stick to the five most desirable engravings. There is some wiggle room for most classes to play around either your relic armor set or swapping um, one type of damage engraving for another that fits the same role, okay? So those, those are the first few things I want to talk about. Um, and then I want to say... Um, the, the things that you need to make sure you do not do, okay, so these are musts, you must not in any way, shape or form um, run 
uh, really off-meta combat engravings. And what I mean by that is, like, don't just because you've maybe got, um, I don't know, Lightning Fury or um, or Broken Bone, don't just put them on uh, to make your 5 by 3 work for the sake of having a fifth engraving, because these things are very niche. Uh, Lightning Fury, for example, is very, very um, underwhelming. It won't really do much for you anymore. Broken Bone, again, is very, very situational, uh, only really viable in things where Stagger is important and you know you're working with communicating with your group for huge burst windows so these kind of things you know generally speaking don't just whack in a fifth engraving that you know you see that you can get this more affordable for the sake of just having a fifth engraving okay and secondly do not in any way shape or form grab an accessory with the wrong combat stats just because it has the engravings and it's a high quality item okay don't just go in there and grab uh expertise or uh, domination on a ring when you need swiftness or crit because it's just going to completely break your build it's going to ruin your character's potential and also people are going to see that and they're immediately going to know that you are not taking it seriously you don't know what you're doing with your build and it's just not going to work okay so do not do that combat stats are way more important than the, the right engravings okay and then lastly do not sacrifice uh quality on your accessories if you need a certain number in your combat stat to make that class work, okay? Um, so right now, for me, you know, I've got a little bit low on the specialization, and that's for a couple of reasons. I have gone lower in quality because I wanted to save some money, and secondly, because I know the bracelet's coming out, and I can add in that extra uh, 100 uh, specialization from the bracelet and upping the, uh, the legendary ring that I'm still wearing. So those things I've already taken into account, and I plan for that. Okay, so I know when I make those two changes at some point down the line around Braushaza that I'm going to bump up the specialization to what I need to make this build work. Um, and I've got my tripods maxed out already, so I know that that is enough. Okay, but do not skimp on uh, quality if your class needs certain um, gates of combat stats. Okay, so make sure that you do your research on that. And if you know your character needs a certain number to make something work, you cannot skimp on it because you're just going to get the accessory. You're going to pay the cost, you're going to pay the fions, and then the build isn't going to work. The rotation's going to be uh, off or just not, not going to be able to complete the rotation in the window you need to complete it in. Or you're going to really hate the playstyle that it means that you have as a result. Okay, so those are the three things to bear in mind. The first thing I would say off the bat, the most important thing is um, use a tool to your advantage to help you work this out. Okay, so what I've got is um, I've got a website I use that's really, really useful. If you don't know this one already, I'll leave a link in the description, but you can just go in and plug your numbers in to the page, okay? And for example, if you have these plus nines or plus twelves, put them in and then start putting in accessories that you have a look at on the, the auction house. And then it'll tell you kind of what you've got left to get on a stone to make it work. And then you can put in the negatives as well. And you scroll down and it'll tell you how your build looks. It's a very, very simple technique to use. Something visual to help you um, kind of keep track of all of it. Something I personally really, really uh, struggle with. If I don't have a visual rep representation of it, it's much harder for me to keep track of it just by writing down words and numbers, okay? So seeing it formed this way, much easier for most people to work with. And you can just freely interchange, you know, your engravings here. You can change anything you want. You can put these numbers to anything you want, even the plus six for Brow Shards are hard. And then obviously you can put in um, your engraving books to, to any number you want as well at the moment. All right. And this is just one of those amazing tools you can use. Another option is something like a spreadsheet. Very, very simple one to use. It's got the um, the automatic calculations put in place. You just put in the um, the roles that you have, for example, here. And um, it, it, it will simply just work out if you've, if you've met the numbers. And you can put in, for example, if you find the quality item you want that's low like this, you put that in. It's going to automatically update these numbers for you so you know where you end up. Okay. Very, very simple, and you can keep track of everything in a visual format as well. And that's uh, another great option to use. Um, also considers the bracelet, the pet, all the extra stuff that you can do. And you can even add a sixth one in um, if you were to, to run a 5x3 plus 1 uh, with Brashaza or if you roll a 9-7 stone. Those kind of things are available. I'll leave a link in the description to both of these. They're really, really useful tools. Make sure that you're planning using these from the get-go because it will save you the most money seeing this because you can swap in everything you find and see if it works, okay? First of all, 
it's important to decide what the most expensive options are when you look on the uh, the auction house okay so obviously we're in a meta right now where specialization is very expensive so if you're running a specialization build be prepared to pay more than a lot of other uh, other options um, and also uh, certain meta engraving books will cost a lot as well so maybe consider swapping off meta to save a lot of money but also the options for changing some of these as well okay so i could change this to cursed doll and still make it viable and maybe save myself six figures because cursed doll's really hated right now in eu uh, people don't want to use it and the accessories sell for a lot less as a result okay so first of all know your five engravings and um, look at the prices on the auction house to get an idea of what everything's going for and then second is be aware of what you can swap around okay so for example i might say i want to want to get an adrenaline ambush uh ring or an earring and actually it might be cheaper if i was just to swap these two around to a 5-3 instead of a 3-5 okay it may sound silly but that could save you the difference of i don't know uh 20 000, 40 000, maybe more just because we're swapping these two around maybe adrenaline is the most expensive right now but actually, if we swap it to Ambush, we'll save a ton of money. And then all we have to do is then just make another alteration somewhere else. Like, and another tip that saved me a lot of money is figuring out which uh, of the engravings is the cheapest in terms of its desirability. I've decided that my fifth engraving being Keen Blunt, I would go for three fives on my accessories because that saves me the most money. And then I would just fill in the rest with threes and on the five on the extra uh, rings, for example, um, where I'm trying to uh, fill the gaps. And as a general rule of thumb, the, the ring is gonna be the best option for your class engraving. If you're running um, plus 12 book, you're gonna want a plus three on an accessory. Ring is gonna be your cheapest bet. It's also gonna be the most likely to have options up on the auction house. Um, and if you're lucky to have plus 12 in both books, you can even opt for a ring that's plus three, plus three, to uh, your class engraving and your combat engraving that you're wearing okay so i've gone for death blow and grudge and then i've got myself a ring that's plus three death blow plus three grudge very very small uh, kind of tip to use to save a lot of money and in that regard you can even use a legendary one like i've got in uh in the game right now i've actually gone for a plus three plus three uh, legendary one and this does lose out on the potential for some combat stats you're losing out on some strength and you're also losing out on a bit of specialization but it's more affordable and much more obtainable to begin with and then down the line i can look to swap that um in in Brauchal's gear or just before Brauchal's, so i can keep an eye on the auction house and get myself a relic ring with plus three uh, to both or plus five or four on one and plus three on the other and, and 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 replace it okay but this way we can get ourselves that five three first with the right stuff and then just upgrade the stats ever so slightly down the line and it's also worth noting if um you have plus 12 books two of them like uh like my paladin does for example or my my um my destroyer my berserker my my gun lancer if you have plus 12 on both of these you can actually opt for plus fours on some of your accessories and that is a game changer in terms of price plus fours don't tend to sell uh, and in terms of a plus four plus three accessory they don't tend to sell because people want the plus fives because three fives 15 easy right you're done uh, but if you have these accessories maxed out on uh, sorry engravings maxed out on your your slots on your books plus fours are actually very very easy to make work in a build and the number one way that i've saved money in doing all of this is just to filter by minimum bid okay so minimum bid is going to save you thousands hundreds of thousands of gold you know you can just watch items see when they're near ending don't bid on them and then essentially you just snipe them you know set an alarm on your phone set an alarm on your computer uh, remind yourself to come on at a certain time and in the last five minutes, you just place a bid and see if anyone's going to respond with bids in turn. And, you know, it's going to save you tens of thousands per item, hundreds of thousands per item. Um, so make sure that you're taking your time. You're not just buying something outright. Um, if you can't afford it, it's too expensive. Because if you just wait long enough, you're probably going to be able to bid on one of, its, of a similar quality or um, down the line in a week or two, one that's maybe um, even got better stats on it or less reduction stats. Okay, so so just take your time, 
uh, watch the watch the market trends and just bid instead of buying saves you a ton a ton of money okay be patient be patient and another one which i see um actually makes a big difference in price is uh the quality of gear right people are very easily swayed by um the the color right so the color of the quality for example if we just if we go from from blue to to, to yellow people are willing to pay a lot more just because it suddenly goes blue. Now the difference in stats is actually very, very minimal. As you can see, it's literally the difference of two points in combat stat, but people will, will actually charge a lot more for their item when actually in reality, the combat stat difference is so small. Um, so you need to make sure that you bear that in mind when you're looking, because a lot of the time, just dropping, um, just dropping down uh, into yellow by the tiniest fraction can actually save you a lot of money okay all right let's, so let's get into the most important uh, part of how we make this five by three and that is the build order okay so the way that you make the five by three is going to dictate how much you spend what you need to look for and how long it's going to take you to make it okay and so the most important thing by far in build order is the stone. Okay, so the stone is the first thing you need to make sure that you do or plan to do. So as you can see here, I've gone for an expensive stone, Adrenaline Ambush, but I knew once I got that stone done, it was going to be able to save me six figures on accessories at least. Um, and I needed to get a six uh, on one and a seven on, on the other, and that would save me uh, hundreds of thousands of goals. It took me four or five stones, so I was quite lucky, um, but we did get the 7-7, seven, seven, which means I'm actually over on my planned ambush master stat, okay? Um, and so the stone is the first one we need to do, and that also allows us to then plan the negative uh, redu the reduction stats as well when we're looking at the accessories. So once you've done the stone, the next thing to do is the necklace. Okay, and the necklace, necklace is going to be your most expensive thing, and um, it also has the most stats on it. So it's something that you need to take probably just as seriously as the class one. So the necklace uh, is going to lose a lot of stats as the quality goes down, but it's also going to be the most expensive item to fill in your build. Okay, it's also going to be the hardest to fill because it needs both correct stats, both the right engravings, and also you need to consider the reduction. So I opted to lose a lot of quality on this item because it was so difficult to find a good piece. And I also opted to put on the cheaper of the engraving options for this one as well. And those are my recommendations for that. Um, I would say uh, drop, drop a bit of quality on the necklace because it's the most expensive. Don't worry about getting a 100 quality necklace. It's going to cost you, well... Uh, swiping probably or your life site your life savings in lost ark uh, if you're playing a, a big dps desirable class also consider taking a plus three reduction on your necklace okay plus three reductions tend to sell for less because people don't want them um, and you can save a lot of money gr grabbing those plus threes i saved a lot of money grabbing a plus three defense there and uh and a and a plus, a plus three attack there, okay? I saved a lot of money on those uh, just because people didn't want them because it wouldn't fit in their build and they would get a negative uh, stat. And that's the last, you don't want to get a negative stat in your build. Okay, so the necklace is second. Make sure you're looking at uh, losing a bit of quality because it's much more obtainable. Uh, getting uh, higher in the negatives in the reductions because that's okay, we can make that work. And looking for the cheaper of the uh, engraving options on the necklace, okay? And preferably, we don't want to lose out on uh, having a plus five, plus three here. If you if you can make it work, a plus four, plus three is fine, but plus five, plus three um, is, is preferable. And then as we move into the next part of the order, we then want to look at the class engraving, okay? So if you're running uh, your class engraving on the left, whether it's uh, plus nine or plus 12, rings are going to be your best option for class engraving. Um, they're generally going to be the cheapest option and they're going to be the most available option. Um, earrings and rings are going to sell for a lot of money. Okay, people are going to pay big, big bucks for earrings and necklaces. So make sure you're looking for rings on the class engraving. Um, you can still search for your, for, your, for your earrings and necklaces, but just expect that the prices will be a lot higher and they'll probably sell much quicker. Um, so yeah, make sure you get a class engraving there. And like I said before, a legendary ring can be a good placeholder for a lot of classes with a 5x3. 
uh, just to make it work and save a lot of money. You know, I've, I've got a plus three uh, grudge death, but uh, death blow, this cost me 500 gold, whereas the relic version of this with the same plus two, the plus threes, but with a, a little bit more strength, but actually less specialization would probably cost me 10,000 gold plus. Um, so for the sake of a couple thousand uh, strength, which affects your attack power, I'm actually paying a lot more or maybe not even finding the option in the first place. So you can use the legendary ring as a placeholder until you're able to fill that run down the line and still have the 5x3. And then as we go, the next ones would be to fill your earrings. Earrings, they're quite, they can be quite expensive, so bear in mind that you will have to pay a little bit extra for these, but try not to skimp on quality because they offer 300 combat stat, which is a lot. You know, you want to try and get as high a quality as possible. Um, and again, same as the necklace, go for the cheaper engraving options. As I said in my, my, my picture of my build, how I've done this working out, I've gone for Keen Blunt on the necklace and the two earrings because that is the cheapest of the engraving options. And that way I can go for better quality, more likely to find them and they're not selling because people maybe want to run Cursed Doll instead because um, it's more affordable. And then you know, you can fill those out there and try and get better quality. And then the last one is rings. You just fill the remaining ring requirement that you need. Uh, it might be the more expensive of the engraving options, but it should be readily available. And then you can match it with whatever you still need to fill in your build. Okay, and that's really it. So the, the order is very quick. You just do your stone first and then your necklace and then your class engraving accessory and then your earrings and then you fill the rest. And that, that's everything you need. This is how I've done my 5x3s on, on five characters now. Um, I'm going to buy my last few Deathblow books now and be done with this one, be ready for Shaza and just pump him up some eye levels. And then I can work on my Sith character. haven't decided which one I'm going to do yet, but it's really that simple, you know. Um, I've, I've geared up a few of these now for less than 50,000. Um, Striker was a bit more expensive. I think it's very popular at the moment and people are really paying a lot of money for it. So it's probably cost me closer to 200,000, but still highly doable highly affordable, take your time, don't rush, don't FOMO, you've got plenty of time, uh, and as more people get their alts up, more items will go in the auction house and prices will start to, to go cheaper, so just bear that in mind, take your time, play the long game, okay, save a lot of money, and you won't regret it, I promise you. But yeah, that's everything from today's video, guys. Thank you so much for sticking with me, going along in the builds, figuring out the best way to do things. And I hope you guys have great success in building your 5x3s. You know, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, what are you building right now? How many have you built? Are you ready for Brashaza? Have you gone off meta? Have you decided to run a different class engraving from other people? You know, a lot of these things are changing in November with the class balance. And so you might want to consider swapping your, your class engraving over to the other option if it's going to get a buff, okay? Or maybe your one that you're running at the moment is about to get a nerf. You know, these kind of things happen. So make sure that you're staying open-minded, taking your time, you're being patient, and then you can, you know, you can make the best out of the situation and still come out on top. So yeah, thank you very much for sticking along, guys. I really appreciate all the support. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. You have a great day. Bye.